They have free apps for your phone. They got free software for your computer. However you feel most comfortable, you have a way to do this for 100% free and 100% by yourself. Of course, you're going to need a camera, but I'm not talking about some DSLR. We all know that our phones got a camera more than good enough to take care of any video that we need to do. I personally do recommend a tripod, though. You can only set it up on so many things. And yeah, you can go and ask somebody to, to hold the camera for you, which is always going to be better. But it kind of goes back to you're on somebody else's time. And for me personally, I just don't know people like that. I don't know people that, that got me like that. Nobody got me like I got me. Yeah, I could hit up somebody that helps me out that one day, but it's like, bro, I don't think you realize how much I'm trying to do this, how many videos I need. What's good and welcome to Indie Leverage. How important are music videos? With all the TikToks, the reels, and you know, the YouTube shorts that we got now. Combine that with some basic video editing skills and you got one of the top ways that artists stay consistent and find their success. Let's talk about it. Now, I'm sure you've probably heard something along the lines of music videos are dead or they're not as relevant as they once were or just get on TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. Yes, you do need to get on TikTok, but as an artist myself, I can't fully let go of a music video just because as I'm writing, I mean, I see the visuals in my head. Sometimes you just want that official music video to go with your song. One thing that I like to do personally, I like to make my songs earn the music video. You know what I'm saying? Just looking at all the data in general, I kind of want to make make a song earn that where people are almost asking for it. like you're gonna drop a music video you're gonna drop a music video then it's like all right as soon as it starts to like dip off you can hit them with a music video that'll get people talking about it again it's another way to engage your existing audience but if you're looking at tiktoks or reels youtube shorts whatever the case is it's all short form content if you're looking at this as just like trends and you know like dances and stuff like that you're, you're probably doing it wrong in my opinion the best artists that i see on these platforms are the ones that are treating these these little 30 second minute long videos like many music videos they're super engaging super entertaining i feel like it's a game changer we've been asking for a way to get in front of new people the smart ones were like okay put a little bit of my sauce on it take a little bit of what they want now i got a tiktok for you that just hit 500,000, 1 million views whatever the case is of course tiktok isn't doing what they was doing back in 2019 2020 it seemed like back then they was making people viral at will they were known for like like breaking artists, influencers, whatever. They was just breaking people. That one girl, I don't even remember her name, but she ended up getting a TV show off of it. So TikTok literally just came into the game like, we can make you famous. And that made everybody flood to the platform. And now just like what Facebook and Instagram did, they gave you that organic reach and they're gonna start to slowly dial it back and they're gonna make you pay to reach that same level. Thankfully, TikTok is not the only one in the game. We now have YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels. We've been had those, of course. But right now, in my opinion, YouTube Shorts is doing better than they've ever done because they're all doing what we're doing as artists, but they're doing it as companies. They're fighting for attention. While they're sitting here fighting for attention, that's going to be our moment as artists to capitalize on it and get as many eyeballs on us as possible. I've seen videos of mine that did not do well on TikTok and they did amazing on Reels that didn't do good on Reels, but they did good on Shorts and all the type of combinations you could think of. Of course, you have videos that do well on all the platforms. My point is I've even gotten back on my Facebook page and started adding reels on there just because why not? Facebook and Instagram are the same company, but there's different audiences on both. Some people will only watch their short form content on TikTok. Some of them just don't like TikTok and they're on reels. Seeing the type of people that come in and really looking at your audience is going to help you determine the type of demographic that you have on each platform. It's not even just the social platforms. Spotify launching clips where you can have short form content on there and they even said it's going to be the same like vertical feed because they're seeing that that is what's keeping people's attention and just like youtube just like tiktok and instagram and all these other companies they are fighting for your attention they want you to stay on their app as long as possible think about any major business it could be nike walmart whatever industry it is if you go look them up on tiktok instagram and things like that you're going to find them not only on these platforms but maybe making short form content that actually fits the demographic. And my point of saying that is we are all businesses. Treating this as anything less than a business is going to make it 
just a hobby for you probably for the rest of your life. And if it does become something where it can turn into an actual career for you, you won't have that business mindset where you can actually just switch it and say, okay, now this is going to be my career. Now, this leads me to one of the best tools that any successful artist is going to have, and that is learning how to create and edit your own videos. Now, I'm not saying you got to be some professional videographer out here, but you need to be able to, on your own, make captivating, engaging, and entertaining videos that can go across to these platforms we've been talking about. When I started out, all I wanted to do was make music. I never thought that I'd have to learn video editing, you know, actually getting lighting to work, learning color correction, learning graphic design, learning how to do proper marketing, all the hats that we have to wear. I never thought that I would need to learn all of those. But I feel like we really can't complain, man. It's, there's never been a better time to be an artist. We're gaining more and more leverage every single year. More of us are becoming successful every single year. We don't necessarily need those major labels to, to bring us success, to make our dreams happen. If it gets to that point, you talking about a partnership, you talking about a fair deal, you talking about owning your masters, you talk about all the things that a lot of us turn our nose up to when, when we think about major label deals, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh no, I wanna be able to have creative control, creative freedom, I wanna be able to own my IP, all of that good stuff. Now because of platforms like TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, we're able to take the wheel, we're able to take control of our own careers i mean that's that's about as beautiful as it gets this whole music artist journey can be pretty lonely sometimes you know you already chasing something that most people won't understand you got people that say they want to be music artists but then you go to talk to them about business or marketing or shit strategy in general and then they got nothing their whole idea of networking with other artists is sending out links and basically panhandling for likes, comments, and plays on their music. And it wasn't until I went all in and I got the coaching, I watched the videos, I joined the master classes, I took the courses, I went all in. It wasn't until then that I realized how much time I was really wasting with these people who is never going to take this as seriously as I do. So if you a true musicpreneur, then I'd like to offer you a lifeline and invite you to a one-on-one -on -one session with me that will treat like your own personal mastermind where I'll answer any questions and we can strategize actionable steps tailored to your unique situation. I'm only opening up a limited number of slots each month so if you'd like to apply you can visit www.indieleverage.com slash live call and don't worry I put the link down in the description for you so for now let's get back to the video. Now, this ain't gonna be one of those channels where I sit here and show you how to edit the videos yourself. I mean, you already on YouTube right now. Go ahead and hit the search bar. Look up whatever you need to look up. You wanna learn how to make your lighting look better? Look it up. You wanna learn how to make your audio better? Look it up. Anything that you need, you can literally look it up. What I'm saying is we just can't be lazy no more. We can't sit here and be like, oh, nah, bro, I got good music. You know what I'm saying? Somebody just gonna see that, bro. That's dead. That's dead, that don't exist no more. They want proof of concept now. So if you do want this, this major label to come down and give you the almighty handout you've been dreaming about your whole life, that's cool. But I'm telling you, they will not care until you have some sort of buzz for yourself. And right now, we gotta go where the attention is. The attention is on short form content. You know, I could tell you about how much money you would save by not having to have a videographer, but what it really comes down to is how consistent you really would be able to be. Not having to be on anybody else's time, being able to produce as much content as you want and you physically can. They've got so many different free software out there. I mean, free, 100%. They have free apps for your phone. They got free software for your computer. However you feel most comfortable, you have a way to do this for 100% free and 100% by yourself. Of course, you're going to need a camera, but I'm not talking about some DSLR. We all know that our phones got a camera more than good enough to take care of any video that we need to do. I personally do recommend a tripod though you can only set it up on so many things and yeah you can go and ask somebody to to hold the camera for you which is always going to be better but it kind of goes back to you're on somebody else's time and for me personally i just don't know people like that i don't know people that that got me like that nobody got me like i got me yeah, I could hit up somebody that helps me out that one day, but it's like, bro, I don't think you realize how much I'm trying to do this, how many videos I need. And at the end of the day, the best thing for me was to find out a way to do it 100% by myself. So if anything goes wrong, I could only look in the mirror and say, you could have done better. I didn't want something like money or somebody else's time or their life to interfere with my dream. It just don't make sense to me. 
And what's crazy is you actually get pretty good at it. I mean, the more and more you do it, the more you learn, the more tips and tricks that you pick up, you start to actually see what you're really capable of. You can take that skill set and monetize it, you know what I'm saying? Take different musicians and artists that are in your local area and do the same thing for them. I've done music videos for people. I've done lyric videos. I've done the mixing and mastering. All the different services and skills that I've, I've built for myself, I've offered them as a service and I'll be honest, just because I'm an artist first, I never really liked it, but it was a good way to make some income. There is no reason not to do this. Actually, I take that back. If you have enough money to just have a team constantly on you, where they're just always filming, you got somebody always editing on some Gary Vee type stuff, bro, go at it. But if you're anything like me, and it's kind of just you, and nobody rocking with you like you rocking with you, man, you are gonna have to learn this yourself. But let's take it back to that official music video, right? I actually had a music video a couple years ago that got sent to me i only paid like 300 for it so this isn't something where i spent you know bands on it or anything like that but i ended up having some problems with the music video i could have hit up bro and been like hey man can you change this can you do this can you do that but one i was already on the timeline i had told him that i was dropping the song on so-and-so date he had so-and-so amount of time i'd already paid brother money long story short he ended up giving me like a day he turned it in like the day before because i was on his time couldn't be too upset Set, but all the issues that I found within the video, if I would have sent it back to him, who's to say when he would have brought that back to me? And either way, I knew it wasn't going to be by the next day. Thankfully, I had my own video editing skills. With that video in particular, my biggest problem was he had me looking crazy in so many different shots. I don't mean like crazy, crazy, but you know how everybody has those insecurities in their head. You got your own good side and bad side. You, know, you got this look that you just hate that you do. Everybody got their own little thing, but the videographer don't know that. So when they send here getting a shot on their end they're like okay this looks good this looks good but when they send it back to you it's like ah man you got me looking stupid in this one shot bro like i was looking all types of crazy like i was about to sneeze or something whatever the case is though you know you want to be able to fix that in a situation like this time meant everything so i needed to fix that today luckily there was one other thing that the videographer did i asked him to use the shortened version of the song that i had sent him it was where like it went straight into the song the intro was cut almost completely out because i knew i might run the music video as an ad i also had the song censored so it was shorter censored all that bro ended up using the original song that i sent him when i first asked him if he would do the project and it had the full intro in it which was like 10 seconds then it also had all the cuss words in it the cuss words wasn't a problem i could just swap out the audio but the introduction that he kept on there ended up being a blessing because he ended up using more footage so when i cut that i was able to use that extra footage and place it in to the different areas that I was insecure about. Long story short, I got the video out on time and exactly how I wanted it to look. By no means am I saying, you know, don't ever work with a professional videographer. What I'm saying is make sure you pick the right time. They come in handy. It's just like a photographer. I'll do a lot of my own photos, but at the end of the day, I still want to do a good photo shoot. So I'm going to go hire a professional photographer maybe once or twice a year to do a good photo shoot. When it comes to an official music video, I'm going to probably hire a professional videographer to get that done but one thing that i'm personally going to try on my next music video is i'm going to see how much the videographer is going to charge me for just the footage because typically you know this is their career they're going to have a better camera than me my camera is only like 400 dollars, and then i got my phone they may have a, a five thousand ten thousand dollar camera not only that again they're professional so their camera movement their angles their lighting not having to be stuck using a tripod that definitely does come in handy so again by no means am i knocking a professional videographer one bad thing that i say comes from always doing your own video editing is you don't have that second pair of eyes sometimes it's really good to have another creative looking in in fact it's almost always good to have another creative looking in and putting in their two cents but that's all i got for y'all man our music videos dead nah i don't think so i think we just gotta you know change how we think about them change how we use them and we'll be all right if you're not already go ahead and subscribe to the channel i'm an artist just like you and this is where we talk about anything and everything that's relevant to us keep on pushing because we starting to gain some leverage I really put myself on, cause i can't settle for average i made it a habit of doing what they couldn't get done what you still here you must not know a video to watch next or something, huh? All right, man. I got you, bro. But you gonna have to get up out of my studio. Cause what the? Got me showing up. You can keep your keeper. Find the gate if they won't let me in. Yeah. We balancing the scales now. And we got them scared. Yeah. We been gaining leverage. Mm. What I need a hand out for. Mm. Watch me really put myself on. And the leverage.
Bruce Jock Jones, you got all the free game, yeah, yeah.